<laughs> All right, here we go. Welcome to Coffee Regular, episode eight. 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 Yeah. Bam. All right. Finally on Podbean. Follow on the Podbeans. Share it. Um, share it. Downloadable it and take it places. Yeah. Nice. Pump it out there. All right. Um. Trying to get on other stuff too eventually. So. Cool. Cool. Today we have the decaf Mexicana, correct? Yeah, the decaf Mexican from our friends at Ridge Runner. Yeah, uh, Ridge Runner that. Coffee. I'll yeah. pop the link up in the in the stuffs, but yeah, I have a graphic of that. Uh, Mountain Water Decaf Fair Trade Dark Roast. From mm. yeah, Ridge Runner. It's good stuff. Ridge, Ridge Runner is an old friend of mine. He grew up with my sister. He lives in my house actually. Nice. Yeah, he's amazing. Good dude. It's awesome. Yeah. So today is random acts of training. Random acts of training. And nice. just looking at incorporating training into your daily life or how you might kind of mix and match that, how it goes vice versa. How you might find yourself training in daily life and doing daily life skills when you're training. Wow. Oh. Um, All right. You have stories, openers, anything with... I got, oh, I got all kinds of stories. All right, shameless me plug. It's actually kind of where my, uh, the idea for my own YouTube channel started. The at-home badass stuff was just random acts of training of just things you can do while being a stay-at-home parent and still be in shape. But funny story, uh, when I was in college, I used to train a lot, but I had a really hard major, so exercise physiology. It was basically almost pre-med. It's nuts. And so I noticed that I could train, I could study for about 45 minutes at a time before my mind started to like break or I started to wander. So I did, so I did this thing where I set it up. I'd have 45 minutes on, 15 minutes off. I would study for 45 minutes and then I'd go do footwork drills in the hallway of the library mm -hmm. <laughs> for 15 minutes. Kind of reset. Yeah, it has my reset. So I do my footwork drills. And then I also found that um, chemistry puts me to sleep. Uh, chemistry I like as a concept, but as a, um, you know, as an actual action of making equations and running things, it literally puts me to sleep. So I used to study chemistry in a handstand in the middle of the library. I'd put the book down. I'd do the handstand over it. I would read the book for as long as I could hold myself up, which got to be a long time after a while, in the handstand to study the chemistries. <laughs> Gives you a different focal point. <laughs> well, yeah, it's because then if I fall asleep, I die. <clears throat> or I figure out that I can sleep in a handstand. But, um, yeah, which would be pretty cool, too. Which would be great, yeah. Yeah. Mm. But, yeah, and I just, um, I don't know, with my childs, you know, carry a kid everywhere. Mm -hmm. You can drop a weight. You can't drop a baby. Yeah. So. Dire consequences. Yeah, <laughs> so I'm saying it makes you strong. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, it makes you realize where you can balance stuff and like on your uh, hips. And... The it, it it actually opened my eyes greatly to the power of the gable grip. Mm -hmm. The gable Sneak grip for up. child holding, yep. and you just kind of pull and suck your elbows in, and the kid sits on one of the elbows and the other. And whoo, gable grip is it's an amazing, amazing tool. Prime butterfly grip a little bit deeper if you need to get a, mm. you know really good wrangle on them. Mm -mm. Gable grip all the way. Butterfly grip doesn't work as well. They wiggle too much. They'll break. <laughs> wiggle. They wiggle too much. They'll pull your fingers. They'll break it. Gable grip, Bates thumbless. It out. Boom. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> uh, yeah, playing. I mean, kids, dogs, weird. You can like understand mechanics when you start to play with stuff. Oh yeah. You know? mm -hmm. uh, I mean. I, like, just from holding my knees, like, she's starting to get really freaking heavy. So, like, I have to sit her on my hip and, like, actually, like, walk around that way to relieve my arm. So, yeah. Um, but I learned that from throwing people. Am yeah. I going to throw the baby? No. No, but, but know you know how, how to, to balance the baby. Yeah. <laughs> I can hold the baby there and, and sit yeah. there and be comfortable and do it for a long time because she's on my hip, not just, you know. My yeah. Arm. It's funny. Um, yeah. Kids, animals. I, I always found. When I was doing random stuff or random acts of anything like that, like it's almost like when you're like walking down the street, you practice footwork. Or, always. Or, oh yeah. You know, you pick up a stick, make it a gun or a knife or a sword. Like that's what I did as a kid. I always just, yeah. You know, those acts of play or you know, but eventually it turned into 
acts of training and when I, you know, pick up a stick or something, it's still kind of like fun to swing it around like a sword or something like that. But mm-hmm. you know. Well, you know, as Jackie Chan says, never grow up. Yeah. Yeah. Why would you? It's boring. Um, well, okay. I'm going to bring that off on a tangent for just a second. Of um, people uh, who are masters of their craft, people who are, um, you know, considered to be genius level at whatever. And I'll give you a really cool example. If you watch the behind the scenes stuff on Labyrinth mm-hmm. and you see David Bowie writing the music and I think he did it in like a week. Like someone called him, said, you want to be in this movie? He said, yes, I love this. Let me get away on it. And like he called in a choir and everything. But to see him composing the music, he was like literally giddy. Mm-hmm. Just happy and loving it like a little kid. And people who have true passion but are really, really, truly great at what they do, across the board, they say they have this childlike wonder Mm -hmm. about their particular thing. And so to bring it into random acts of training and play of, you know, the people that that, that are best that you can think of anything, it's not just a flow state they're in. They're truly happy as if they're just a little kid just playing. Playing. As intense as battle might be, or whatever, yeah. like it's play. It's play, but whatever it is. But I think you know, with the Bowie example, is one of my favorites because you can really see just like just the joy, and you can also see that he is just a. I mean, he knows exactly what the hell he's doing, mm-hmm. but it's not stressful for him. It's not. He's not dictating anything. He's just everyone have fun doing this. I love it. Yeah. A random act of training, yeah. and it came in, and it came out to be a wonderful thing that everyone remembers and I mean, talks about. And I mean, yeah, but look at all the mm-hmm. different stuff he's done and how much fun he had with it. Mm-hmm. And it's because that's why one reasons why he was able to go all over the place with it. It's because he just truly enjoyed it, so he could experiment and go everywhere. Yeah, but that fun gave him the flexibility to. Yeah, it didn't lock him in. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, what do you find yourself doing daily if you're like walking around the house doing dishes? Do you find yourself doing weird stuff like oh weird stuff I I'll, wear I'll like kick doors shut or I'll like... I eat, oh yeah, I use my toes to turn lights on and off, which um sorry, mom, I still do that um, <laughs> but um I wear ankle weights mm-hmm. a lot um I wear ankle weights while I do dishes and stuff. I just walk around with them as I'm like vacuuming and things um that's not necessarily random that is very thought out. But, um, I know, like, with my daughter, especially when she was a baby, um, just to expose her to it, I, when we'd lay on the ground, I would do, like, shrimps or rolls or, you know, turn stuff. Everything became a fight scene, yep. um, you know. The exposure is through play. But the exposure was through play, but I, I'd always put one or two little bits of, like, proper technique in there. Mm-hmm. But not harp on them. Just put them in there. And, uh, you know. and Time. It, That'll start to add up. It, it, it has added up. Mm-hmm. I mean, she's nine now. and Legit. Yeah. Now she's trying on people. <laughs> no, legitimately, yes. Um, <laughs> and, I mean, but her idea of technique isn't the way that most people would think of it. It's just how you do stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, she can kick properly and punch properly and do all these. And her her jiu-jitsu is just... It's ridiculous. <laughs> but she thinks nothing of it. That's normal. Mm-hmm. You know? Um, yeah. And that's, you know, part of that was put in place through uh, through play. I mean, a huge chunk of it. And it was me sort of consciously putting something into a random act, but saying, all right, here's an opportunity to just plant a seed. Mm-hmm. You know, okay, bam, do that. Yeah. And then, I don't know, from just training and stuff you know i'm always footwork you know um footwork everywhere yeah it's on. Almost, i mean as long uh, you've trained forever so i mean i've trained for a long time so i mean um, it's almost like conventional methods begin to be boring sometimes so you have to like see? mix it in and play and like um, do different weird stuff <laughs> and i mean you have to you know come at it from different angles too of you know the conceptual bits of mm-hmm. i mean what we've talked about before, of sort of how training bleeds into life. Yeah, that's, and, you know, that's just, you the know. link for me mm-hmm. to like visualizing and visualization in terms mm-hmm. of like competition. Like, you know, I can 
apply something I do and like stepping a certain way, like, oh, that's that weight yeah. distribution oh, there feels good. That was I neat. I want to do that yeah. in training. I'll try that. So I can yeah. take that mm. and maybe do that in training and maybe hopefully make something work. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's the aha moments. Yeah. So I guess you're just constantly analyzing everything for fun. Right? For fun. And even if it's not conscious. Yeah. And then that's the thing. It's, it's not good or bad. It just is. Yeah. Sometimes it's conscious and intentional. Sometimes it's just there. Mm -hmm. And you're like, oh. Oh, yeah. and you, oh. And yeah, you consciously tweak it or do something, uh, or yeah. sometimes you correct yourself, or sometimes you make a really bad habit. And you're making a mistake, and you yeah. have to correct it. But yeah. you know, you start to do uh, you, your actions are going to dictate what you're going to start to do mm -hmm. over long periods of time. Yeah, I mean, and I don't know. Training will help you realize that too. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people that. All the people that don't train, you don't know this. <laughs> but, um... What's <laughs> up? Uh, start training. Yeah. But, um... Consequences of your actions. Mm -hmm. Of repeated habits. Yep. Of... You know... Be, like, especially if you spar, you start to realize that it's it's not them, it's you. Mm -hmm. Of... It, you know... You'll see all your bad habits and realize that if you correct them... They get they better. Yeah. It's not that this person does this thing that you can't handle, or you have this thing and it's bad. And that, it's okay. How do you approach it? Mm -hmm. And they're like, oh, how do you fix it? How do you make that not happen? How do you? Yeah, uh, yeah. Like we were working on some uh, half guard magic <clears throat> last night. Um, I say that because Jake is a freaking wizard. It's nuts. I'll have to show it to you. Pro level. Oh, it's oh, it's literally like Harry Potter level. Um, but uh. There was this one point where I come up from the half guard and you do this thing with your foot and elevate their foot and like you have to slide yourself back so that they fall off your lap into the pocket and then you get your seatbelt, put your hook in, take their back. And I was messing with it and just to see what it felt like wrong as well. And I was trying to move him and I could because of the way the hook worked. You could lift the dude and da da da. And then I was like, nah, now I'm just gonna set this right and move myself and billion times easier mm -hmm. in a way better control and it just kind of reinforced a bunch of links in my head that fell into a better place mm -hmm. of you know move yourself and then okay, yeah, but you had don't move the, the other guy move yourself and the awareness to break that down and apply that on the go not everyone is going to sit there and be able to hmm. actually tell themselves like oh maybe i should try this this way they're like oh fuck it's not working i gotta do this and they're brings frustrated it, back, and it brings back to the joy and passion thing mm -hmm. um i think one of the reasons um i feel like people think i'm an idiot and that's my own mind but it's because i'm like i'm really childlike when i train like i'm i just have fun with it i'm so happy yeah like, i don't i just i'm playing and you have to have goals and, and stuff during training but at the same time like if you fucking well you're, you're gonna suck the fun out of everything <laughs> yeah you can't suck the fun out of it like i i lived that life i sucked the fun out yeah, of training for yeah. a long time and I just con yeah exactly i consciously was, destroyed the fun aspect to i destroyed it, it was, yeah gains, if you want to call it that yeah you know? to, to glory and you know, all this stuff and i looked at it completely wrong i did that for a long time and I've been able that to come, sucked. it sucked bad. It took, it ruined it for me. Mm -hmm. And now I've been able to come back around. Mm -hmm. Luckily. Luckily, yeah. Some people, that's Some people never do. And yeah. then that's why they don't train anymore yeah. or something. But, um, yeah. And so I think with the random acts of training of that's rooted in play, it's rooted in just being able to not worry about like what people think of you or what are doing or, or having to see something like pushing a cart at the store mm -hmm. as just this, like, no, nah, like, how does that move? Yeah. Neat. Yeah. I'm going to mess with this and it's going to become a thing. And I'm going to, yeah. yeah. Or just like, how does this apply elsewhere? Like, uh, maybe this is like a plow when I was farming back in the, you know, yeah. 1800s or like I'm pushing a fucking sled or something training oriented. Yeah. Um, yeah, just no one has an imagination. They just think, oh, I'm about to do this fucking thing. I'm about the store to get milk. Like, huh. no, nah, like ride the ride the cart, you know, like, ride the cart like a kid on the back and like yeah. scoot down the aisle. It's fun. And then, I mean, if you want to be adult about it, analytically, you know, analytically look at the balance aspects of riding the cart. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. How do you shift it? See where your, your <laughs> you know, weight distribution on your feet is. Yeah. You know? <laughs> uh, yeah. Mm. But, yeah, random stuff that I'll get into sometimes. Like, I like to kick balls around like just to oh yeah 
see like where I can generate the most power, like on different parts of my foot or something, or just mm -hmm. balance. See if I can like jump the point A to point B or something, just to see if I. Yeah, can... I'm almost hopping over something. Yeah, just to uh. see if I can <laughs> do it. I guess like uh. you know, for the sake of training, I won't do anything like ridiculously reckless but like i like stupid human tricks sometimes too yeah know. stupid human tricks are fun man. yeah yeah just to see if you can move your body in that way right uh, or you know like slack lining or something like that has applications you know it's good for balance and stuff but like yeah. dude it doesn't necessarily you, like help me on the map but it does i don't know i think time. it does have you ever seen i think two two examples um leota machida and henner gracie have you ever seen yeah. any one of those guys Pro on the slack levels. line dude so good yeah, that's why I, I actually own a slack line. I need to put yeah. it up. No. Yeah. yeah, it's gonna be fun. <clears throat> but yeah, it's. I mean, it's not. It's directly beneficial, but it's not directly that skill. You're not directly training martial arts per se. You're not saying like I'm gonna no. kick, no. but you're doing something that can benefit it. But yeah, there's there, there's definitely a crossover. Or you know, jujitsu uh, and rock climbing. I think are a great pair. Yeah. Oh yeah, they pair up well. <clears throat> grips. It's all about grips, man. Yeah. Uh, I think it starts with a grip. Yeah. Boy. Uh, but yeah, every every time like i'll do something that's always been my link to visualization or like sometimes if i don't want to think about competition or something i would ah. link it to something else or you know apply it to something else so i'm still training but once you do you gotta reframe it yeah and that way mm. i can mm. mentally tolerate it i guess if i didn't want to mm. deal with directly thinking about competing or something like that it's actually a thing in um psychology how to deal with past trauma is um, initially you're going to go and you're going to dig it up and you're going to describe it and then you have to sort of shift your view and not necessarily say that it wasn't like a bad thing or something mm -hmm. but then just look at it from another perspective and try to take something positive from it in a way yeah you know and not like and not like like i said don't don't demean the trauma but then to shift how you look at the trauma mm -hmm. and then it helps you to be able to you know deal with it better yeah. But, um, you know, handling competition, um, a lot of competitors will do the same thing of they will, uh, you know, when you kind of get your mind off training, right, you know, you get your mind off the competition, you don't think about it, you're going doing something else, is they literally, you know, in, in literally some terms, they'll be, they shift their view of it, where they're not obsessing over it, it's not defining them, but it is a thing they got to go do and they got to excel at and do well at. Mm -hmm. But it's how it's, it provides a gap. Yeah. And separate it. You know, and it's you know Jimmy Pedro was always very big on that of having you got to have something else that you know in your life. Yeah. And it's, he always encouraged a lot of his um, college age athletes to go to college and do judo at the same time because mm -hmm. he's like very specifically he said like because here's the thing if you have you know. A test you did really well on and then you go lose at a judo tournament well at least you can say hey i did really well on that test yeah this loss does not define me as a yeah. human being yep. Yep. i got something good to hold on to and vice versa with that yeah and that's no. and you realize you're not a piece of shit if you lose you know yeah like, yeah and that's the thing i, I used like we both have been sets one point or another totally entirely engrossed in that aspect in the competition or mm -hmm. and not a healthy way yeah um and that's that's what happens. The joy goes away entirely. <laughs> and it's gone. Yeah, and you like you lose why you actually started. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, that's sad. You know, <laughs> it is. It's horrible. And but not everyone's gonna continue to plug through and find the other side. In fact, most people aren't. Yeah, I find that to be really strange. And I think that I think why we're friends is both of us find that to be strange. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's like, why wouldn't you train to love? Or like, why? why won't you just keep going? Yeah. It'll get better. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Off topic, but do you notice the cinnamon stick at I all? do. It's nice. It's subtle. Mm -hmm. It isn't overpowering at all, but it is noticeable. It's no nice spice in there. It's a little bit. Yeah. yeah. It really brings out the earthy tones. Yes. Yes, it's very good. Uh, <laughs> the earthy tones. Um, all right, so random acts of training. Like, where, like okay, so you, you texted me that, and <clears throat> it yeah. seemed very exciting and happy. Yeah. As the words convey in your 140 characters or less. Right. Of, so where did that come from? Uh, I saw a guy, uh, 
where was it? On Facebook, his name's Paolo Rubio. He hmm. does a lot of college stuff, and um, he was just like play play knife fighting with his kids and stuff. And oh, sweet. Uh, like Collie's very specific, just because it's bladed, and usually you know there's a stick or an actual weapon involved. Mm. Um, but I think he was talking about how they would walk to school every day, and like they would train or something like that with their sticks, and like that was that. You know, they're just they train. And that was their time to train, and they did it like you're oh, saying, yeah. like just yeah. training time, or you just kind of get on with the routine. And I think that's where I like in my head, I was like, oh, a random acts of training, or maybe he said it or something on a comment. But I was like, oh, yeah, like, I have so many applications of random acts of training, like, mm -hmm. you know. But, it, again, it all relates back to, I think, playing and learning through play. Yeah. Um, I think you posted it on Facebook a while ago, like, you'll learn something, like, X number times faster if you. Oh yeah, where you can learn if you to, if you learn it through play, you can learn it in ten reps. Right, right, yeah. As yeah. opposed to if you learn it not through play, it takes you know five hundred or something crazy. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. and that's I think an interesting approach in like jujitsu. Like there's such a heavy drilling emphasis. Mm -hmm. Um, and like of course like that's mechanically necessary initially, and there is rolling, and there's situational rolling. But then you have like, uh, people who like like Kit Dale, he zero oh. percent drilling, hundred percent rolling and like situational stuff, mm -hmm. and that's I mean he fast tracked the black belt, he you know succeeded at black belt, and that then you have other people that are like oh drill, drill 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 you know. Right. Um, um, actually reminds me of something Jake said last night, which actually was very cool. It's because what we're doing is initially very complicated. And then once you kind of get the gist of it, it's not, which is very much jujitsu anyway. Mm -hmm. But um, I was messing up something, and I called him over, and he kind of fixed it for me. He goes, pay attention to the entry. Like where we start and the entry. That's really what I want you to get out of anything. Because here's what that does is it, it gives you this, this, it, this. Well, not just sets it up, but it gives you the opportunity to, ex to experiment with it. It mm -hmm. gives you the chance to play, right, as that... Everyone thinks about the end goal. He says, no, think about the beginning. Entry, we'll start here, grip here, grip here, wait here. Get to here when you're sparring, when you're rolling. Then you'll be able to mess with stuff. Mm -hmm. And so it's like if you can get to the beginning, if you get to the entry, then you'll see where it goes. That you might not do the exact thing, but look at all the stuff we've done off mm -hmm. of this entry. That's, I mean, it all yeah. starts with a grip, or it all starts with that entry, or, you know? Yeah, but yeah, that's what, he was, that's what he was saying, is that, like, yeah, you messed up this part at the end. That's fine. You got the beginning mm -hmm. right. Yeah. And because you got the beginning right, you're going to be able to practice it. Yeah. That's, like, uh, from an instructor point of view, like, I'll tell people sometimes, be like, we'll do, like, X, Y, and Z, and I'll, be people, I'll tell people to, like, show me something, or, you know, show me what you can come up with from there, or, you mm -hmm. know, just play with it. Mm -hmm. uh, and but then it's almost like people the pressure is on it's like people have to actually show me something like, oh I'd no almost, I'd rather <gasps> like you show me a mistake like show me something just show me a fucking blunder <laughs> like yeah. uh, but try something check it off the list you know um, you might find something that works for you really well yeah. maybe not you might fucking face plant but cool yeah. tried it <laughs> and, and be okay with the face plant in front of the instructor you yeah. know what I'm saying it's, it's fine especially I mean, I'm not gonna judge you i've done it i've done stupid horrendous no. terrible things well uh, people people forget that you didn't come out fully formed yeah like, my wife does this to me all the time i really think it's funny as she met me like when i was a comic book character i could do so much cool stuff mm -hmm. before my hips went man <laughs> and i mean that's coming back but um I mean, it was nuts, and I never got tired, and I out-trained everybody, and I could jump and hit my head on a 10-foot ceiling. Uh, it's, it was crazy, right? And she thinks that's who I am. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm like, no, I wasn't born that way. <laughs> I wasn't even close. Yeah. Like, you don't understand. It yeah. took me literally 20 years. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And like again, random acts of training. Like I'll play with the you know exercise balls and stuff like that, or I'll mm -hmm. sit on them or move on them, and like be like, oh, how do you do that? Like practice. Yeah. Playing. I played a lot. Again, it played a lot on it. But... Face planted, and you know, but I played. But it's 
a skill that I've acquired and that it helps in jujitsu. Because just messed with it. Yeah, yeah he just messed. But it was behind yeah. the scenes, so no one saw it. So, right. like, you know, the tree falls in the woods and no one puts it on YouTube. Did it really fall? <laughs> like, yeah. no. So right. like bears and shitting in the woods. There are plenty of YouTube <laughs> videos of bears shitting in the woods. So go check that it out. It is true. That's insane. <laughs> Stay away from the bear, man. Yeah. You don't want like people to watch you go to the bathroom. What do you think the bear's going to do? Yeah. Poor mm. bears. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, something like that or uh, pull ups or you know so goofy weird shit like that. Like mm. I, I'm not very good at pull ups or stuff, but I can do a few. You know, in a nah. row, but that's just from years of grappling. Like, yeah, you're, like you're, you're strong in that just, in that yeah. way. <laughs> you know, I can't squat 500 pounds by any means, but you know, oh. I can lift a person. That's cool. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love when I get to lift people because I always let them know that they got lucky because I was I have the size of a child. <laughs> I'm like, I'm so much lighter, and they pick me up. They're like, Oh my god, mm-hmm. you really are. I'm like, Yeah, I told you, I'm a child. <laughs> There's yeah, you're like light as a feather, hollow bones. <laughs> yeah, I think they might be. They might be hollow. Bird bone. That'd be awesome. <clears throat> hollow bones are actually stronger. Boom. Um yeah, um I can't remember the actual force equations on that, but because of the hollowness they do, they can distribute the force differently. Sweet. And yeah, they're actually stronger. Hmm. Is that why like a bird can smash into a window and just be fine or something? <laughs> well, yeah. Um that's like cuz landings, man, impact. You know, no matter how good you are with like floating, like <laughs> there's a lot of impact all day, man. Always. Yeah. Um, break falling. Break falling is the greatest thing you will ever learn in any martial art, especially especially this time of year. Yes. <laughs> yeah. No, I've I've been telling that to people my whole life. Mm-hmm. As soon as I learned how to like, I always kind of knew how to break folks from klutz. <laughs> but um, as soon as it got formalized, I was like, nice. Yes. But when I used to teach, man, I'd always tell the kids that this is the most important thing you're ever going to learn. Yeah. You like, will use this skill. Every day, like, you know, how many people have is, it's just saved their life just because they could do a back break fall. Like, my wife, we were talking on the phone the other day. This was crazy. She called me about something, and she's walking, and we're chatting about it. It was about, uh, and, um, and all of a sudden, whoop, whoop, and I'm like, hello? Are you there? <laughs> Are you okay? And I hear like rustling in the yeah. snow. Or so, or, I'm like, hey, what happened? Or, and she goes, I slipped, but I did a break fall. I tucked my chin. You'd be proud of me. I got to get to this meeting. And I'm like, see, if I hadn't <laughs> broken that fall, oh, it could have been dome. horrible, yeah. man. It'd be a badass day, but she was fine. But she went it, on with her day. It took a, <laughs> took a real scary thing and made it real funny. <laughs> but yeah, talking on the phone, la, la, la. And a random act of training saved a life. <laughs> saved a life, yeah. Practice your break fall, slip on the ice. Yeah. Hmm. Ah. Um, oh. Or just, I mean, learning how to get thrown and like learning how mm. to like relax and stuff. How like to that. relax when you're getting tossed will change your perspective on reality. Mm-hmm. Like, and straight especially up. training judo and training throws and <laughs> getting Everyone launched into it, a yeah. freaking car wreck off a two story building. Yeah. Oh, that's what judo fine. is. But yeah, learning, like, that took me a long time to learn to just chill out when someone lifted me. And I was taught mean. So, like, my coach would do that and I'd be all stiff and he'd just slam me on the ground and be like, did it hurt? I'd be like, yes. He's like, did it wrong. Yeah. Boom. Did it hurt? Yes. Did it wrong. Now, I used to have to, at one point, I was doing break falls off ladders to learn how to break fall. Like, it was nuts. But, um, yeah, just to learn to chill out. And then, like, once I got it, you're like, hey. Yeah. Like, there was oh, a period of time where I was doing a lot of throws and I wasn't training as much jiu-jitsu and I was with Sean. Oh, nice. Um, and, yeah, he just threw the piss out of me, you know. And, and eventually you just you chill out yeah, and yeah. you're like, oh. You're like, well, I can either tense up and have this suck way worse or I can relax and have it suck a little bit less. Yeah, so, let go of the fear of it and yeah. realize... Just, ah, just realize you're you're powerless and you're a ragdoll and just eat and it just and get up and do another one. Ragdoll, <laughs> but that you know the power of the breakfall, man, is once you trust it. Yeah, exactly. Then you're able to chill out. If you question it, you, you question yeah, it, you're done. But yeah, if you trust it, like I remember one time, um, cause I, this was funny because I had a broken hand at the time and a big puffy coat, <laughs> and I'm walking through this this parking lot and I slipped. And I don't know how, but I, I was above the cars. Damn. Like, I slipped, like, hard. I remember being in the air, like, 
don't smack with that hand it's broken <laughs> all right cool i'm laid out it's good. like in the air like i'm like side break fall Same. we're good poof on my puffy coat bam got back up da, 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 da. see could have been catastrophic but <laughs> fine yeah uh another instance where i didn't this is prior to my martial arts training tr mm. prior to uh, knowing how you to mean break there fall. was a time before right yeah no this is when i was ice skating Ooh. prior to knowing how to break Ooh. fall that hurts also not wearing a helmet fucking skates to the ceiling and i just fucking ate it and i was like man and i was just i just laid there for a sec i was like man I don't want this to happen ever again. <laughs> no. This is the moment. This is no. the turning point. Learn to break fall. Yeah. That's yeah, like, that shit hurt. Yeah. Fall but I also realized the worst. I can take a decent hit to the brain. So. <laughs> oh, hey, man. That's a good thing, too. No, you can take a hit. Yeah. Yeah, you're okay. Like, huh, that didn't put me out. Cool. Yeah. That was fucking hard. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But that was... Yeah, that was a funny memory. Once I, like, realized what break falling was, I was like, oh, yeah, I really should have utilized that then. Could have. Could have prevented a lot of. It yeah. would have hurt. Yeah. A lot less. Yeah. <laughs> He's found that. Yeah. So I don't know. Okay, we're kind of talking about almost accidental acts of training that mm -hmm. result from training, really. Yeah. But okay, back to random. Back to random training. What is it? Something that you would do in your life that you sort of consciously, or unconsciously made a connection of wow, this is making me better at this, or this helps. Da da da. Mm -hmm. All right, what do you got? That's hard. Sometimes it's hard to like. Yeah, because you don't know you're doing it. Right. Yeah. Uh, the way I carry a lot of stuff. I yes. mean, and a huge, huge yeah. factor. Pick up a lot of things and just, yeah, the way I carry got that awkward form. items. Yeah, got that form. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Um, that's the thing. Like, I prefer to pick up awkward, weird stuff. That's more like a body. Got to control it. Yeah. yeah. Like, it gets all nuts. It's cool. Or yeah. like, I want my laundry. I always carry my laundry in a massive fucking bag instead of like a basket or something. So like, I'll, you know, yeah, like gut yeah. wrench it. And that's like, you know, fucking big. So it's like getting a heavy weight or something. So, yeah. But I, again, you know, I can practice the, uh, the yeah. gripping and then like I'll toss it into the car, you know, there you go. Nice. That's yeah. cool. Got a nice throw rep and some gripping reps. So. Yep. Every rep um, counts. I always have just like lacrosse balls and tennis balls hanging around, like just on the floor, just because I'm always doing something. Oh yeah. And like I'll kick mm -hmm. them around, like it's a foot mm -hmm. sweep, or um, I always think about like my posture or something as I'm trying to do. Oh yeah. Technique yeah, I'm always setting my way. posture when I'm doing stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if there's a cabinet open, I'm gonna kick it shut. Like <laughs> mm -hmm. if there's a, the dishwasher door open, I'm gonna spinning yeah. back kick them. It's using the foot. Boom. Oh, yeah. Uh, why no reason because it's fun really because you can because i can yeah it's fun it's fun it's a good time to have i want to see if i can and maybe if i slip on the floor it'd be funny like i don't know yeah um, but it's good to have feet arms man yeah yeah it's just fun it's more fun yeah. life's more fun do stuff weird yeah. try it out <laughs> uh, <laughs> like people a more common example less martial arty like people fucking get a piece of trash throw it at the basket yeah Kobe Make basket. Boom. Yeah. Try and go for that. Huh. Maybe the ex high school basketball star might be a little bit better at it. Huh? Maybe. Then I don't, I don't know. know. I also find if you, get, if you got your cataract fixed and you can see the, you see yeah. the group again, yeah. it'd be amazing how many more baskets you make. Eyesight helps. <laughs> uh, speaking of eyesight, the bird box challenge. Have you? you seen I haven't it? seen it. I don't okay. know what it is. So, the bird box is that movie with Sandra Bullock. Oh. They have to be blindfolded because of some evil shit that's happening. Mm. I don't know. Um, they end up having to drive at one point blindfolded in the movie. Daredevil does that all the time. Right, yeah, it's not okay. a big deal, really. Right. But, uh, <laughs> okay. Anyway, someone in real life did that, and go figure if they got into a wreck. Dude. Um, so, yeah, people are I, stupid. One time, I, I used to wear contacts all the time. One of my contacts got torn, and I didn't have my glasses on me, so I did have to drive home blind once. Now, not as bad as you think, because it's Athens and I have the whole place memorized anyway. Hopefully. No, definitely. It's back then. <laughs> now, no, they changed everything. Oh, my God, I died. Now you're screwed. But, um, no, but I, it wasn't that far. I just kind of had to go down Richland and hang a left. But I rolled the windows down so I could hear everything, because my ears are my primary sense anyway. I just radared it. 
and I can see enough that like if brake lights come on, you know they're bright, they get brighter. And mm -hmm. you're like, oh, they're slowing down. Okay. And you can hear it and whoo, radar it the whole way home. So I wasn't completely blind because I could at least see the brake lights, but I could also hear the brakes. I could mm -hmm. hear people tap. I was listening more than I was seeing, but yeah. you know, so bird box challenge. Yeah. You're like, and then but, um, got it. Yeah, I got that. Got but uh, <laughs> don't do know, that though. Do That's it. just ridiculously stupid. <laughs> mm. Yeah. I don't know. People are stupid. They make bad oh. choices. Well, people don't have exciting life. They I don't know. do enough, man. Yeah. You got to train. <laughs> don't, yeah, go literally. Train. It's, do your, stupid shit. it's your mini adventure in life, man. Go train for an hour. Mm -hmm. You get to have your quest, and then you don't have to do stupid stuff. Exactly. You don't have to, like, yeah. Uh -huh. I would come up with a more extreme example, but driving blindfolded is pretty. That's pretty extreme. Yeah. Like, you're lucky no one died. Yeah. 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 I, just, and I don't know. Training was always, like, my way to like stay out of trouble and do stuff anyway so like again you're gonna be training instead of doing stupid shit <laughs> yeah idle minds man you know? right yeah but um yeah i don't know yeah it keeps you out of trouble but that's literally how it keeps you out of trouble because you don't have the opportunity to get into trouble yeah and then you're hopefully by the time you're done you're too tired to go do stupid shit normally yeah normally yeah <laughs> just yeah i'm just gonna lay here while you guys do your dumb stuff there's plenty yeah there's plenty of opportunities when i was younger like I remember like people getting in trouble and just weird shit happening and like I wasn't there because I was training and I was like ah, 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 I'm training or yeah, I'm, I'm entirely like, too exhausted for that. Then, yeah, okay. exactly. And people are like, Oh, you're never anywhere. I'm like, No, I'm not getting fucking deep shit either. So Yeah, I'm not also and never I'm, in jail, guys. Accomplishing other yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> accomplishing stuff elsewhere, so yeah. I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> so that that's one of those things where you could look back and be like, That's where my training kicked in and you know, one of those times where it's kind of sucked and uh, it wasn't pleasant, and that's where it paid off. So, <laughs> no, very much so. All right, so um, let's bring it in since we're people that like to train and it's sort of a normal thing for us. Bring it into then the random act for the other person mm -hmm. of where can they fit it in? Yeah. What can you do as a random act of training? That because everyone. I've found, like, like when I was a personal trainer for a long time, everyone thinks it's a big deal. Yeah. You have to change this and this and this and this and do this and this and this. And I'm like, or you could just decide to do push-ups two days a week. Yeah. Like start sprinkling there. it in. <laughs> start there. Yeah. Uh, what, do you, what do you think? Uh, okay. Yeah. I mean, as well, I was a personal trainer for some period of time as well, so I heard plenty of... No, oh, yeah. You hear all yeah, this stuff. You hear people thinking, like, they got to do this, 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 and this, and, like... How about you just like drink water when you wake up, like instead of yeah. soda or you know something yeah. like that? Like uh, small habit changes can help tremendously. No, yeah. and as long as it's consistent, going back to back to consistency, day one, day one. <laughs> um, but for instance, I don't love waking up early, but for instance, like this year, this past couple couple months i've just been getting up at five i get up at five and you, you get up way up. early anymore yeah. yeah and like i just get up and i that's when i get my mind right to tackle the day or whatever and that's not for everyone that's not something i'd like to do i used to hate getting up in the morning because i hated my job at the time you know i, just, mm -hmm. I used to resent it so yeah. now i turned it into something that i like and i turned yeah. I turned it into a habit and like a, turned into a semi good decent one i think yeah. uh but that was some something that I didn't necessarily love, and I kind of incentivized myself, like, oh, I get the coffee, or I get, you know, I get to stretch out, because, like, my back hurts or something, like, yeah. um, whatever you have to do to make yourself do it, like, within reason, don't be like, oh, I'm going to eat a cake if I do this, like, you know, oh, be yeah. reasonable, yeah, but, be reasonable, <laughs> but, I don't know, yeah, fit it into your day, and it's the littlest things that, you know, um, a lot of little bottles make a big bottle, yeah, of, <clears throat> That's a movie quote, by the way, but um, it's, uh, you know, I like to I like to kind of use that as an example. Or like I tell my daughter, I say, a lot of little soaps make a big soap. Mm -hmm. When she cleans the room, how many soaps I got to do today? <laughs> I'm like, three soaps. She's like, okay. Boom. Yeah. It's like little hotel soaps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. little hotel. So that's, that's <laughs> the kid version of the saying if you need one. Uh, but, you know, and you want to do this, a physical experiment, go buy like a 
big ass thing of Tupperware, big ass Tupperware thing, like giant thing. Get a Coke bottle or any kind of bottle of something that you're going to drink that you don't think is much, right? Every day, fill it up, dump it into the thing. However many times a day you'd be drinking that bottle, fill it up, dump it into the thing. You'd be amazed at how quickly it fills up, Mm -hmm. of how fast your giant ass Tupperware that holds like 10 gallons or something is full. Okay, so you apply that into a positive aspect. I'll bring it back to the push-up deal. I was actually getting ready to tell a friend of mine this, of... um, like we were having a, we were FaceTiming the other day and I was doing push-ups. I was doing my push-up series and he's like, that was like a Jean-Claude Van Damme movie. A lot of, a lot of crotch shots and butt shots. It was a training <laughs> montage. Cool. I'm like, thank you. That's the best compliment I've ever had. Yeah, but he's it. like, I wish I could do something like that. And I was thinking about it and I was like, dude, you can. Yeah. Like literally. And I was going to tell him, cause he has a, he works nights. So life is weird when you work nights. Right. But I was going to tell him like, dude, pick two days a week where you just do push-ups until you can't do push-ups anymore. And like one set, one set to failure, yeah. not like multiple sets, just do a bunch of push-ups. And I don't care if it's five. Let's do it. But you do that twice a week, you'd be amazed at within like a few weeks, how many push-ups you can freaking do. Or like how and, you can start to kickstart other habits. And like then that. it'll like, start, to, yeah, it's a yeah, catalyst. Yeah. And then you'll, you'll start to feel better. Your body will get stronger. Your posture will get better. You won't feel like crap. Yeah. Yeah. And it, every, it's, it's just the cascade. That's the explanation of like cliches that people need to hear <laughs> you know? yeah well it's, that's it's teaching coming right, back to teaching right. too as you learn to do that <laughs> oh fuck if i do this it's gonna be this and it's gonna spiral my life out of control yeah. not really at all. no not really <laughs> yeah it's <clears throat> basic rhetoric guys read yeah. about rhetoric um, <laughs> but I, I, I but people who don't like training or people who are just super busy like mm-hmm. um <clears throat> is aaron uh he was moving a bunch and he Oof. he has it's tough. Uh, but he has a gym in his apartment complex right now. So he'll, Ooh, like, yeah. he'll like walk by and do something real quick as he's like moving something. Oh, yeah, man. So like he'll like bust out a set of something real quick and then he'll, you know, run out and go to the gym or whatever. Yeah. You know, so like. That's cool. Great idea to just like fit it in. Yeah, hey, you're um, walking by. Good job. Just do a yeah. quick set. Like <laughs> yeah. get it in when you can. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of other examples. Like, I, I mean, when I was working at. <clears throat> We have the Y growth. Oh, right, yeah. God. Right. Remember those days? Yeah, and I was <laughs> working. I work primarily with like elderly folks. Mm-hmm. So like, and I actually worked with a program that was that worked with people with Parkinson's and stuff like that. So like, implementing oh, cool. exercise into their Chipotle daily box. life was important and stuff like that. Yeah. So, you know, they kind of developing that routine and making it a habit, and like it helped a lot. You could tell who was doing oh. their homework and who wasn't. Yeah, you can always tell. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but simple things like you could be doing like heel raises when you're doing brushing your teeth. Yeah. Do a couple. Little, oh, you know what I like? You know, hang I was gonna say, thing. you know what I do when I brush my teeth? I close my eyes and stand on one foot. Yeah. See. Yeah. Boom. It's go. awesome. Weird Every morning. Thing. Yeah. Half my teeth is one foot. Half my teeth is the other. And, and it, you're it, trying to look, make it weird for yourself to see mm-hmm. if you can do. But it helps <laughs> so much with just yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. Oh. So I mean, there's a very extreme examples and there's very easy examples. That just are, yeah. You know easy ways to uh implement and actually like accomplish stuff and then you can you start to see like oh there is time for that like maybe i have 10 minutes in between a meeting or something i can hold mm-hmm. that hold a squat you mm-hmm. know for five minutes <laughs> like you know do something hard yeah um you know, pop it out take the stairs yeah yeah you know, that's exactly. the classic one is take the stairs yeah yeah and it's, again cliche yeah. but but the explanation behind it it really works. works out for you you know if you, I mean, you know, you got one of those people that only needs to count floors or something. Like my watch does that, mm-hmm. you know, and uh, or count steps. Like yep. literally, a lot of little balls make a big bottle. Yeah. If you pay attention and you go back and do the math, if you took the stairs every day for everything you need to go up there for or whatever, it'll blow your mind how many flights of steps you hit in a week. Mm-hmm. And it's either that or nothing. Like that adds up mm-hmm. fast, and it's 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 real. It's good training. Yeah, like you know? or a different aspect. Like, uh, by the way, super cool. Booked a trip to Iceland in July mm. to train. You finally did it. Yeah, booked it. So oh man, going to do that in July, fifteenth to twentieth, I think. Um, Dude. But like a way to save money. Obviously, I had to start saving money for shit like that. So yeah. super interesting way, like. 
like a two liter of dimes. So a two liter bottle of dimes, roughly yeah. like seven hundred dollars. Like once you fill it up, you, fucking you, dime. At your age, you know how to count change, right? Yeah, no, it's impressive. Right? Um, <laughs> <laughs> but again, very small, a very small token of currency. Oh, but so it's, put up. that in the put that in the bottle adds up a couple hundo bucks right there out of nothing out of pocket yeah, change man, I'm yeah jealous. a lot of apps anymore okay. like i have an app on my phone it's um called acorns like okay. it'll take change from like purchases gas oh, rounds off it'll round it up and mm -hmm. invest it that's awesome so yeah that makes like, that's a savings. huge difference dude like you just spent you know five dollars and 72 cents like boom 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 yeah that happened that happens fast yep. that's and very dude, cool like I started it and like I put five dollars in initially mm -hmm. and then like uh like one week I had like a decent paycheck so I put in like ten bucks or something mm -hmm. and then like I put on like the automatic roundup so like when I buy gas or something it'll like just it'll like uh round it up to five dollars and then invest it so like it'll add oh, it up nice. until then and then like put five dollars in or whatever like okay and you don't even notice exactly yeah, so you don't even notice that it's gone. That and it keeps my bank accounts like even and stuff. That's so. nice. It's easy, <laughs> so, it's easier to keep track of too. Yeah, yeah that's so cool. I hate that. Um, uh. But I'm and I'm not great at saving money. Like for some reason, like digitally, I can I can hoard cash really well. But like mm. for some reason, when I get paid for paychecks and stuff and like this that, like I want to spend it or well, I don't know what it is. But like, yeah, it's it's one of those things. But it's just a nice passive savings type of thing that's very cool yeah but way to hack your brain yeah like you realize that if i don't have, can't hold on to it i don't know that it's there exactly and so. like <laughs> it's it's not just sitting somewhere it's like actively trying to build for me so like that's kind of fun yeah it's like a game yeah that's neat <clears throat> and i learned about the stock markets and cool stuff too when hey I'm doing it, so. that's also fun it's different it's educational and it's beneficial <laughs> huh what you got there Oh, just bat signal. <laughs> bat signal. No, uh, autofill on a prescription. Mm, nice. <laughs> but, yeah. but normally, that was probably autofill does this to me. Talk about auto stuff. It's really funny. Is I go to Target on Wednesday, and then I usually get home like eleven, eleven thirty, and at noon, autofill will be like, "A prescription is ready for you." Oh my gosh, just there. Damn. Come on. Why can't you tell me at 9 o'clock? <laughs> yeah. I mean, the iPhone's tracking your movement. Why don't they just let you know? Like, yeah, like, seriously. Like, <laughs> the no, government knows where you are. Just let you know. But always happens. So I'm like, you can wait till next week. That's yeah, like, <laughs> I'll get you later. You text me all you want for the next seven days, <laughs> bitches. <laughs> well, I'm not out. You'll be fine. That's funny. Uh, yeah, like a lot of interesting little goofy things like that. There's a lot of different applications, different... Mm -hmm. But uh, the theme there is just, yeah, a lot of little bits add up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and bits. I mean, people don't look at training like that. Mm -hmm. And they really should. Yeah. Of you tiny to, things build up, man. At the very least, like, if you're having, like, motivation issues, this, that, whatever, like, it's better than fucking nothing. Exactly. You know? <laughs> yeah, it's better than nothing. You know? I know something when I was a kid I used to do is, um, from being from an old school Taekwondo background, stances were a thing. And uh, I would do like horse stance for like a sitcom, like a whole sitcom, mm -hmm. <sighs> you know. Or when I was first learning how to do splits, I would stretch while I watched Bulls games. Yep. And that was the year the Bulls won 72 regular season games. And I only missed like three of the televised games. <laughs> but I would sure. literally do like... Heck of flexi. <laughs> yeah, I was doing splits for like an entire basketball game, just stretching. That's awesome. And yeah. But, you know, just a little thing, mm -hmm. a little thing to get into and work on. And, you know, otherwise I'd just been sitting there. Yeah. You know, so make something. Make beneficial. something out of nothing, you know. Yeah. And I got to see Dennis Rodman's amazing chain, color change hair as he dove into the crowd for rebounds, right? Dennis Rodman. Rodman was the man back then, dude. That team, dude, that was, you know. Yeah, he was. He was, like, awesome. And then, like, now... He's like homies with like Kim Jong Un and stuff. Like world peace, weird. world <laughs> peace through Ro world peace through Rodman, through, dude. It's gonna Rodman. happen. It's Fuck totally it. gonna happen. If it's gonna happen. It's gonna be through Dennis Rodman. <laughs> it is. It's totally gonna happen. That's the key. I'll take it. Because <laughs> he don't care. Yeah. People are just people. That's hilarious. <laughs> he's still as weird as he was back then. 
Oh yeah, weirder in fact. Yeah. But uh, respect. yeah, respect a person is just themselves. Yeah. And is willing to sacrifice their body for a rebound, mm -hmm. uh, multiple times, a hundred times a night. Yeah. You know. Put it on the line, literally. Yeah, <laughs> all the time. Yeah. Those were yeah. the good days, basketball in the nineties, man. Yeah. It's I, best. I mean, I was I was young, but like I remember watching Bulls games with my dad and stuff. That was like, the good stuff. Reggie Miller was killing everyone. The That's Nick good. killer. That was fun. Yeah. And, like, Tyson was kicking. Tyson was still crushing souls. Oof. It's a good time, man. Yeah. Roy Jones Jr. Mm -hmm. was still of that time when he played a full basketball, amateur league bought basketball game, and then went and, like, just annihilated a dude in a boxing match that night. <laughs> Everyone hated him for it. Really? Because he was just like, what else am I going to do? Yeah. That's like, hilarious. Like, I need to challenge shape. myself <laughs> somehow. And he was doing, like, Bah, bah, like just dumb stuff and just totally own this dude I can't remember who he fought but I remember watching that fight like sometimes man you and pick. that's the thing he was chilling he was playing was yeah he was just having fun with it and people didn't realize they were all pissed because they thought he was disrespecting the boxing no nah, he was on another level no he day. was just on a, a level and that's just he was playing he was enjoying himself mm -hmm. he was respecting it at the highest level in fact of yeah I'm gonna have fun with it yeah uh, that's something I think. It's almost it all boils down to just like don't take shit so seriously. Sometimes. Totally, man. <laughs> Play a little bit, fuck up, laugh it off, dust yourself off. Oh yeah, have fun with it, and <laughs> don't think that you know everything. And yeah, like accept that. Like, I don't get it. Yeah. Cool. I'm gonna yeah. mess it up because rebel, you know what? Rebel in the fact that you don't get it. Yeah. Be Enjoy be okay that with that. Don't get it. Because eventually, I, I it's so hard for like white belts and stuff oh, to see like you're in the life. prime spot oh white belt life in the prime spot yeah, yeah. like zero expectations <laughs> yeah zero and you just you can just and do you can it. ask me the stupidest questions and i love it like yeah as long as you're thinking man you're asking questions good yeah that's the best yeah and see so, yeah people don't see it at the time mm. yeah they don't get it and uh but that's the thing that's why the journey is beautiful that's why you start to see People start to get it. You're like, yes, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. But um, that was always my goal as a teacher was to like make my own training partners, and to make people good, and to make people help lift excel. everyone up, man. Yeah, the yeah. rising tide lifts all boats, bro. Right. So, you know, lift everyone. Yeah, but, there's no reason to like withhold stuff. Like, and I've had experience with coaches and stuff doing that type of thing too try to hold that back yeah mm -hmm. yeah i've had that too jesus and when you can see through it it's ridiculous yeah because then you can see the people who can't see through it and the people who can and you're like yeah like why it's are you doing this veil. man you know there are no secrets yeah yeah you know, just just have it you know as it i mean in the age of the internet that makes life a lot easier mm -hmm. like you can have you can't have secrets so much anymore you yeah. do realize that you're not the only person that knows it <laughs> somehow like, like even if you just thought a thought it, there's gonna be a google ad in two seconds about it so <laughs> yeah lots of yeah, other people thought, thought that thought and someone made funny. a meme yeah um yeah but you know the interconnectivity <laughs> of the world has been made obvious even if no one's connected mm -hmm. of yeah we're not as unique as we thought Oh. A hive mind. <laughs> yeah, hive mind. Yeah, totally happening. <laughs> Although on that note, I still haven't actually met another stay-at-home dad. I've heard of them, like creatures in another land. But uh, yeah, they're out there. You'll reach them. You'll Someday. reach them. At home, badass. Yeah, it'll still happen. Them. Yeah, I mean, what Finland's catching up? The latte papa thing's been around for six or seven years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. there you go. Like, I think they should pay me. I think I started that. <laughs> <laughs> yo, yo. Let's, sponsor uh, me, yo. Get the, just the whole country. Just sponsor me. Let's get the proper payment going on. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess we're wrapping it. Oh, almost done? Yeah. Right. Gotta start heading in to start shoot boxing soon. Oh, teach the shoot box. Let's shoot the box. Yes. It's fun. I love the shoot the box. It's very fun. Very it's cool. Been a nice blend. And it's just like a way to play. It is. Because I like to play with jujitsu. I like to play with Muay Thai. I like to play with different stuff. And it's a nice freestyle way to do that. All right, so real quick then. You're teaching the class. You get to create the environment. Are people buying into the play aspect? Or are people like all serious? Like they got to get it right. Like, oh, we got to do it right. Like, uh, what are you doing? I, I try to have both. So like I'll have a 
time where they're practicing one specific thing maybe and trying to like okay. focus on these specific aspects of it then we'll take it away and then try and like play with it like right. that oh, same tool. are people how many people are actually actually messing with it like more i would say most most yeah, all right people cool actually have more freedom to play that way i think cool and they're actually taking the freedom, though. They're oh, yeah. actually deciding to play with it and mess it up. Oh, and yeah. Do a little bit wrong and then, ah, uh, fix this Absolutely. thing. And, uh, That's the know. thing. It's totally been, there's, it hasn't just been, like, reps on reps on reps on stuff. Like, it's it's a repetition with experimentation and ah, coming back nice. to fix it and kind of playing with it. And it's developing on its own, and it's really cool. And it's only going to get better. So. Neat. Come play shoot boxing with me. <laughs> play the shoot the box. Shoot the box. It is fun. Uh, so have a wonderful day yeah and as always keep your coffee regular for sure